Hey y'all and welcome to Moner's Market and welcome to my French country crockery decor elegant for less video. That is a mouthful. I found these crockery stamps that I fell in love with and I could not wait to show you what I've made with them. So let's jump into DIY number one. Look how gorgeous that is. I got this bucket from the Dollar Tree and what caught my eye was that gorgeous filigree laser cut on the top of it. Isn't that pretty? This is actually a decent sized little bowl bucket too. They had their spring stuff out and you could get this bucket in several different colors. But I want you to look at how I'm painting this. I'm going side to side for the first coat and I'm not changing that pattern. And then on the next coat you'll see me go top to bottom. And what that does is it creates this little pattern that's sort of a little checkerboard, if you will, pattern. And you really can't see it with the naked eye. And I don't know that you'll be able to see it in the video. I do think on one of the pieces, when I'm doing, you know, the little reveal that you do where you show it off at the end, I think one of them you can kind of see the pattern. But anyway, if, if if I see it, I'll I'll show you. But it does create a pattern whenever you do the first paint job one way and the next paint job in another direction and that's what I was trying to do on this bucket and it worked so anyway back to the bucket <laughs> isn't it gorgeous look at this y'all this is the star of the show I am so in love with these new IOD molds that I just bought I had to go straight to the company to buy them but I want you to look at that is that not the most gorgeous picture you've ever seen. Now this was my inspiration for my video, but I couldn't find any mason jars that weren't already imprinted that stuck out. You know what I mean? Because you can't put a stamp on it when that stuff is already sticking out on the jar, if that makes any sense. It said in there that if you tear them off, like when you take them off, it's going to be hard to take off, but they would not tear. But I'm telling you, it was so hard to get off the first time. I was scared I was going to rip them. But anyway, they didn't rip. Everything was fine. This is just me reading over the instructions because I had never used them before. And I wanted to make sure I didn't mess anything up. So I went in and I picked out the one that I thought would look cute on that bucket. Any of them would be cute. They're all gorgeous. Watch how hard they are to peel off, though. And this is sped up a little bit. Look at that. I didn't think I was ever going to get it off. It was really, really hard to get off. Now, it said when you first take it off to take some sandpaper and lightly sand it and scuff it up. Now, do not do what you're about to see me do. This is a brand new ink pad. I've never bought an ink pad before. I also bought ink because I thought you had to add ink to it. Well, guess what? You don't. It already comes with ink. Look at that. <laughs> That's about the dumbest thing I've done in a long time. Anyway, it comes with ink, so save you money. You put your stamp on there, push it down, and make sure that it, everything's covered in ink. Now, what I should have done is put my hand behind the bucket because that bucket kind of kept moving on me and it didn't give me a really dark stamp but it's still beautiful then I just took a, a little brush and dipped it in that ink and sort of went around and distressed my bucket with that same color just so it would all match and I didn't want to do real heavy distressing but I did want some distressing so I kind of went around the high spots and then a little couple other places on the front just to give it that little bit of rustic old shabby chic style now look at these little legs y'all these are the cutest things I got them on Amazon and as always they will be linked below all I did was just glued them to the bottom you don't have to do the screws because then you're going to have a screw sticking up through the bottom of your plastic and if you put something down in there you might poke yourself and the glue worked just fine because I'm actually using my wood hot glue which is a thousand times stronger than regular hot glue but look at how cute this turned out I'm so in love with the way it turned out 
Now, these flowers are just something that I had around the house that I thought I would throw in there to style it for you while I showed it to you. But look at those little feet. Aren't they just the cutest? I think they were perfect for this little bucket. Let me know if you'd have left the legs off, put different legs on there, or do you like them like that? I happen to love them. And I think they add just a cute extra touch to my little bucket. But look at that stamp. It's so pretty. Josephine's Famous Marmalade. I love this the way it turned out. Now, this DIY number two is a jar from the Dollar Tree. That bucket was a bucket from the Dollar Tree. I'm not going to have more than $1.25 in any piece I do as far as the piece itself goes. This is a nice size jar that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I keep my beads in these jars. Now, right here, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my bucket. I am going to go in and I'm going to paint up and down on the first one and then side to side on the second coat to give it that little textured look. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that you'll be able to see the texture whenever I show it to you when I'm done. Anyway, I am doing the side to side now and I'm holding it with a napkin because that first coat I got impatient and dried it with my heat gun. And honey, that thing was so hot, I couldn't even hold on to it. But anyway, I did go inside the lip of the jar just in case I decided to have the lid off where it looked finished. You know, I don't like to have a piece that doesn't look finished on all sides. Then I went in and got this gorgeous IOD stamp. And see, I mean, it was hard to get off, y'all. Now, the second time's not as hard. Then I scrubbed it with that little thing like they told me to, put it in my ink. And I, every time I would use one of these stamps, I would stamp it right there beside me, you can see, just to make sure I was getting the ink all over it. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I put a little, couple of little paint brushes on each side of it just to make sure that I that my jar didn't roll on me when I was trying to put the stamp on. And that's just me kind of making sure there's enough ink on there. And then you just press it down and watch. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I was nervous, and I still did not press it down as hard as I should have. Now, this is me just taking the same ink and coloring that little thing that I'm going to use for the top. Now, you've seen me use these a lot lately for legs. They are from Amazon, and I will absolutely link it below. I'm just going to glue it to the top, and then I'm going to take that same ink and just sort of distress around this jar like I did the little bucket. And like I said, that just ages it a little bit, and it gives it a little bit more depth and dimension as they say <laughs> or as we say and I think it just gives it a little bit more character so I'm gonna make sure that my lid is on I mean my little topper is on real good put it back on the top and that's all there was to making this jar and look at how stinking cute this turned out I love it I think it is absolutely gorgeous this stamp did turn out a little bit better now I think if you look at the texture of the paint, you're going to be able to see a little bit of what I was talking about, I hope. But look at how cute that looks on the top of that jar as a little handle. I love it. I think it's just adorable. I went kind of slow hoping that I can catch that texture. But isn't it gorgeous, y'all? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is me trying to zoom in to see if we could catch that texture, but... Maybe not. I don't guess I did, but I promise me it's there. <laughs> or I promise you it's there. Anyway, these corbels, now I know that these corbels are not the same thing with the crockery, but I had to add these in. I got them at the Goodwill for 99 cents. I found six of them the day I found these. And I don't know about you, but everything I get from the Goodwill, I've got to clean up because our Goodwills are not that clean. They're super dusty, and I don't know. I just feel better washing everything off because you don't know where it came from. And you want to make sure you have a good, clean surface 
to paint on. So I took it outside and I painted it, painted it with this black Rust-Oleum 2X paint, top, bottom, sides, inside that little hole, and just gave it a little facelift. And they were beautiful like that, but watch what happens when I add this white Waverly chalk paint. You will see it literally come to life in my hands. Just watch. I'm going to hush a minute and let you watch it. Look at the left compared to the right. Is that crazy, y'all? I said I was going to hush, but y'all know I can't hush. Anyway, I did that to both of them. And while it was gorgeous like that, I thought it was beautiful. And it brought those gold corbels up 10,000 notches, in my opinion. It still needed a little something else. So I went in with my truffle paint. And I just hit the high spots. I did not do the whole entire thing. I just hit the high spots, barely. So I didn't do it real heavy, and I'm going to show you why in just a second when I show you the reveal. It just gave it a little bit more character, and I'm telling you, y'all, that little bit of truffle made the biggest difference in the world. Look it up there on the top right corner at the difference that paint job made. But now look at this. See that truffle there yonder? Now that almost gives it a gold hue if you look at it right. But isn't that beautiful? I think that truffle just really, really, really bumped it up a few notches. I thought these turned out gorgeous. And they were really, really pretty when I displayed them all together. So that's why I added the corbels in with my crockery stamps. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I just love these. Love them. Let me know what you think about those. Now, let me show you DIY number four. This is basically the same thing that DIY number one was. It's just half the version. It's a smaller jar. But these are what I use, like I said, in my craft room for my smaller beads. I'm going to do the same thing with this jar that I did with the other jar and the bucket. I'm going to paint it in one direction for the first coat painted in the opposite direction for the second coat and get that cute little texture. Once that dries, I am going to add another stamp. Now, when I add the stamp this last time, I think I had just gotten a lot more comfortable with using the stamps and I got a much better print on this one than I did the first two. And I almost went back and painted over the other two. But you know what? I don't want to show y'all perfection. I want to show you life. You know, I don't want to show you realness. So I left it like it was. And it's pretty. I mean, it's not ugly. They didn't turn out ugly. They just didn't turn out as dark as this one will. But these stamps are just gorgeous. And like I said, I just got a little more comfortable using it every time. So I peeled it off and sanded it like it said to do. And I think that causes it just to catch that ink a little bit better and then put it down there. And I kind of got smart and rubbed it around a little bit. And I thought maybe I could get more ink on there by rubbing it around. Maybe that's what the trick was. I don't know. But this one definitely worked better than the other two did. But I want you to watch how pretty it turns out. Again, I use my little paint brushes to sort of firm up my thing so it don't roll on me. Put it down, press down, and look. So stinking pretty. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to paint my little top, and then I'm going to distress around the edge of the jar. I think these little toppers are just the most precious thing ever. I'm going to glue it down, and then I'm going to distress my little jar. Once I get my jar distressed like I did the others, it's done, and I'm going to show you how gorgeous this little one turned out. All I have to do is add my little lid back to it, and it is done, and look at how stinking cute, y'all. I love it. Love, 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 love it. And like I said a minute ago, I think those little, they're actually knobs that you would put on a drawer or something, but I like to use them for feet and handles because you know I very seldom use something for what it's supposed to be used for but look at how pretty that print turned out I love the way the print turned out 
it's just oh i don't know i just love them and like i said there'll be link below in case you want to get you some and is this the one that you can kind of see the pattern in i don't know i thought surely you could but i reckon you can't anyway this is my final reveal look at how gorgeous all of these pieces are together y'all i love it this is probably one of my favorite videos again i don't know what it is about it i just love this old antique shabby chic vintage whatever you want to call it i never call it the right stuff and people always let me know down in the comments, which is great. Don't stop doing that because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I want to know you teach me. I'm here teaching you, but you also teach me. So let me know what vibe or what whatever you call it this is. I know it's crockery stamps, but I don't really know. Is it shabby chic? Is it French country? What is it? I call it gorgeous is what I call it. Now, see, look, that don't look so bad, does it? It's not as dark as I got the last stamp, but it still don't look bad. I think it looks cute. Now, it's me trying to zoom in on those adorable little feet down there. I love those little feet, y'all. I think those are my favorite part of that bucket. But see, it don't look that bad. I think it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think about them down in the comments below. I'm wondering if a cream color would have been pretty on there, too. But, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm just showing you what I do to give you ideas so that you can do it. You can paint them pink for all I care, but use those stamps because those stamps are gorgeous. Now, I am not being sponsored by those stamps. I'm just in love with them. Now, see, that's not as bad as I thought it was when I first stamped it. And it's gorgeous, ain't it? And it looks pretty cute. What I'm trying to show you, okay, right there. You can sort of see the texture on here. I thought I had captured it somewhere. You still can't see it like I would have wanted you to see it. But anyway, I'm rambling now, y'all. Isn't it beautiful? I can't wait to read down in the comments to see what y'all think about these. AF Griswold Potted Meats South Bay Port. I have no idea where that's at. I'm trying to show you the texture here, but I just never could catch it. But it's there. I promise you it's there. Anyway, thank you for coming and watching my video this week. If you're in the chat, I just wanted to say hey to y'all. We have the most amazing little chat at the end of every premiere. and Well, not the, at the end. We have the amazing an amazing chat throughout the whole video. But I always like to say hey to y'all at the end of my video now i will have another video next tuesday at eight o'clock eastern standard time as always thank you for coming thank you for watching be blessed bye now